Germany's new foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, has pledged to prioritize democracy and human rights. That's in stark contrast to the foreign policies of successive administrations under Angela Merkel. One of the tests for the new German government will be relations with Russia. As Moscow amasses troops on its border with Ukraine, Berlin has halted the launch of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, saying Kiev's territorial integrity can't be compromised. Relations with China, Germany's largest trading partner, will be another sticky issue for Chancellor Olaf Scholz and his administration. Berlin is pondering a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Winter Olympics over Chinese treatment of Uyghur Muslims and its policies towards Hong Kong and Taiwan. For some insight into the challenges in balancing human rights and commercial interests, I sat down with German MP and Green Party Foreign Affairs spokesperson Amit Nuripur. This is One on One. Amit Nuripur, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Your own party member and new German foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, uh, pledged that Germany from now on will pursue a values-based foreign policy which will be guided by principles such as the promotion of democracy and human rights and less focused on Germany's commercial interest. Um, that new pledge will be put to test fairly soon on many fields. Let's go through them one by one. For one, of course, Russia. Uh, the war in eastern Ukraine is in its seventh year. And uh, lately we've seen a significant buildup of Russian troops near the Ukrainian border. But Germany also has commercial interests with Russia Nord Stream 2, in particular the gas pipeline running from Russia to Europe across the Baltic Sea, which is posing quite a conundrum and dilemma for the new German government as to how to deal with it. In your opinion, should Germany, should Berlin refuse the pipeline a license to operate under the given circumstances? We always oppose this pipeline. Now the construction work has been finished. Now the question is, uh, will there be, be gas driven through the, the pipeline? And we think that, of course, we have to watch uh, the situation uh, along the border of Ukraine very closely. We are seeing 120,000 combat forces of the Russian armed forces there. And it's a highly risky situation for the territorial integrity of, of Ukraine in these days. And of course, our commercial interests are super important, but not the only thing on earth. And uh, fighting and, and standing for a, a rule-based uh, world order and um, human rights is something which is crucial, not only for my party, but for my country. So the new German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, uh, from his indicative from his uh, initial remarks, wants to keep the pipeline separate from politics. He's saying this is, at the end of the day, an entrepreneurial uh, endeavor. Uh, and has nothing to do with politics. But, but your party is, is right, fairly adamant about uh, uh, making sure that uh, Nord Stream 2 will be associated with Russian actions and aggression if and when it comes to it. Um, I saw a lot of quotes given by Social Democrats, also by, by our chancellor, that um, this pipeline is important for the Social Democrats but um, not uh, on, on, for, on, on any price. So question of uh, uh, what's going to happen to our relationship to, to Russia after they try to invade a neighbor country of ours is, of course, an important one, which is putting any single um, part of the bilateral relations uh, between Germany and Europe on one hand and Russia on the other hand at stake. So I very well hope that the Russians are reasonable enough not to go over the full Monty. But uh, at the end of the day, we stand on the side uh, of, of our uh, partners within NATO and, and EU. And uh, Ukraine being invaded is, is concerning both the Baltic states, uh, Poland, and a lot of others, uh, other countries in the region um, very, very badly. So this is why we have to be clear on this. But realistically speaking, too much time too much effort has already been spent uh, to complete this pipeline. At this point, the discussion is merely about whether it can be halted, tempor temporarily halted, not cancelled altogether. Isn't that correct? I think the question of uh, uh, if the, the right and correct um, legal foundation of a project is not relying to or not depending of, of, of the um, height of the investment. So. Let's just wait and see. I, we would love that project to be stopped much earlier, 
we see that this has been constructed, the, the, the construction works are over. So this is not a case that we can't promise to stop the pipeline. Uh, and uh, yes, we as part of the German government are sticking to, to, to the treaties and agreements of, of the former uh, coalitions and, and, and the governments in the, the country also, but we still are opposing this pipeline. And if there is a legal chance to cancel that project, we will. The other way uh, Russia and Vladimir Putin is hurting and weakening Europe these days is through Belarus and Lukashenko. By driving migrants uh, towards the EU, we're seeing a humanitarian crisis uh, playing out at the border with Lithuania, with Poland, but also Latvia being involved. Uh, some, some people within the SPD are trying to promote dialogue with uh, Vladimir Putin. But then there are some others, uh, particularly from your own party, who say, no, Vladimir Putin only responds to strength. What's your opinion? We need both. And this is exactly what our foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, has re repeatedly uh, uh, said in, in the past and going to say in the future. We need dialogue and toughness. Uh, We're going to go on talking to the, to the, to the Russians. I, for myself, as a foreign policy senior guy, I can, can assure you that I had a bunch of discussions and then dialogue with the, with the Russian side, and we will go on talking to them, no matter what's going what to happen. Uh, there is no alternative to a dialogue. But beside of that, dialogue is not replacing uh, action. And if there is need for action, because there is an invasion of a neighbor country, for example, there is an annexation of, of part of this country, the way we saw it in, in the, the Crimea, of course, there is need for toughness also. And, and this is what we are, we, we, are, we are driving to. This is the, the way of the foreign policy, which you can, you're going to see uh, given by, by Annalena Baerbock for the next years. It's going to be dialogue and, of course, action and then tough enough where it's needed. And speaking of actions where it's uh, needed, another country where Germany's new values-based foreign policy will be tested uh, will be uh, in Germany's relationship with China, of course, Germany's uh, biggest trading partner. We're talking here about an annual trading volume of over 200 billion euro. In light of Germany's dependence uh, on China when it comes to its exports and economic relations, uh, can Germany really afford to aggravate a partner such as China by bringing up uh, human rights violations against Uyghurs, by bringing up democratic backsliding in Hong Kong or China's uh, relations and threats to retake Taiwan? Of course, China is a partner when it comes to, to, uh, to the economy, to, to the commercial relations of the two countries. Uh, China is a huge economic partner of the United States, of the European countries, of Turkey and Germany and a lot of other uh, states in, on earth. And uh, of course, this is not about cutting the, the, the tires. It's not about decoupling. Decoupling is a mad idea. But, and, of, and one more, uh, we just endorse and admire the rise of China, which is a historical justice. But any rise has to, be take, has to take place within the frames of the international law and rules. And rule breakers, just have to attend to, to uh, just to have to get answers for them. What is happening in, in Hong Kong is a breach of international law. What is uh, just just announcing that it could be an invasion of, of Taiwan is a breach of international law. Uh, what is happening today to the Uyghurs in, in the northwest of the country in Xinjiang, uh, the, the massive uh, violation of human rights is a breach of international law. And we just not, cannot sit there and say, okay, we have our business ties. The rest is 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 uh, gonna gonna get answers of ignorance from from our side. So we're gonna uh, have partnership with China, and of course we're gonna have rivalry and systemic rivalry. And on the other hand, and we have our competition when when it comes, for example, to to fair trade with China, which is uh, not always happening. Yeah, and one one uh, specific test and case where Germany can put its uh, uh, you know, a new foreign policy to test is uh, uh, by the upcoming uh, Winter Olympics in Beijing, of course, which the U.S. has already said it will uh, diplomatically boycott those. Australia, Canada, Belgium have, have joined that call. Uh, will, will Germany uh, boycott, diplomatically boycott the upcoming Beijing Winter Olympics? Uh, let me first uh, define the, 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 this kind of boycott. This is not about the athletes not to go there. These are uh, sportsmen and then women who trained their entire life for this couple of days. 
and this would be uh, they shouldn't get uh, get punished for 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 the political challenges we have with China. When it comes to to the to the governmental level, I do not see a lot of people from my government going there. I have no idea if there's going to be an entire um, uh, uh, exclusion of 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 of, of uh, participation of of uh, cabinet members of Germany. There hadn't be any consultation about that within our new government. There are still things which have to be consulted, but uh, and of course we didn't have it at the European level that year. The question of um, of the context, if you want to call it the boycott, like the Americans did, or you just do not go there. And, uh, and claim that uh, you are running out of time and that you have a lot of other things to do. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the green ministers of this cabinet won't go to Beijing because it's not the right thing to, uh, not, not the right place to go these times to celebrate the Olympic game while in the same country there is this uh, massive breach of and violation of, of human rights, um, not only but especially for the Uyghur people. After 16 years of Angela Merkel, Germany has a new government in place. What is not new are international calls, global calls for more German international leadership, uh, both from Europe but also uh, beyond. Uh, that is something that uh, it will be very exciting and interesting to see whether Germany can step up uh, on the international stage and do more, provide more. Um, what, what is your reading as a foreign policy expert uh, who, who is at the forefront of this leadership debate in Germany. Uh, will we see more German leadership on the international stage moving forward under this new government? Uh, I hope that we're gonna be more ambitious and we're gonna take more responsibility. The question of leadership is uh, depending of, of, the of, of the reception from on the other side. There are a couple of countries in Europe who are uh, allerg allergically um, reacting to a more German leadership. So. It's not about Germany now taking the flag and then running to the front. It's about uh, Germany uh, acting more European. And this sentence of being more European in the foreign and security policy is, or, or is even written in our coalition agreement. Um, just give you one example. We have this uh, bilateral uh, uh, consultations of governments between China and, and then Germany. We even wrote into the coalition agreement that we're gonna prepare that uh, more European. So the, at the end of the day, we know that the highest priority of, of Germany's foreign policy has to be the European unity. And therefore, this, this government is, is absolutely ambitious and going to work um, hard to, to get there, to have Europe being uh, more um, active and uh, uh, more responsive to the situation in the world. And European unanimity is certainly not easy to reach. Uh, uh, Omid Nouripour, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Ali.